Okay, everybody, we're going to do another bit tensor brief today. Today's topic is void AI. So anyone who watches hash rate knows that, you know, for the last, you know, four months or so, uh, I, I have been complaining that um, for the average crypto user to get into subnet tokens, it's just too difficult, right? Um, you have to only get, you can only get them on the native BitTensor chain using BitTensor wallets and using native Tau, right? And you have to use user interfaces like um, Tau Stats or, you know, Tau.app. Uh, and, or, you know, and, and these things are, are not bad. I mean, they're, they're very usable to people like me and some other of my friends. Uh, but to your average Solana user, your average Ethereum user, it's not easy, right? They, they don't have Tau. They don't have Tau wallets. They're used to their MetaMask wallet. They're used to their Phantom wallet on Solana. Uh, they have assets like Solana and Ethereum and USDC and USDT. They would prefer to use these things to buy the subnet tokens and to use the wallets they already have on the chains they're already familiar with. So up until Void AI, there's been absolutely no way for some of those people to get at the subnet tokens in BitTensor. Uh, and this has resulted in some of the subnet uh, tokens in BitTensor having extremely low market caps compared to um, you know comparable AI projects and products out in the real world, you know, outside of BitTensor uh, by orders of, you know, magnitude of, you know, 100 to 1 or sometimes 1,000 to 1, right? So kind of just crazy mispricing going on inside the, the subnet universe, comma, but also a massive opportunity for anyone who can get in there. So along comes Void AI. There are other parties doing similar things, but today we're going to talk about Void AI because they are the first and the only one of these things that are available right now. Um, they make subnet tokens available to users on Solana. So um, what they've done is they've created a bridge between the BitTensor universe uh, for Tau, the native token. So there's now Wrap Tau on Solana, um, and also the new the new thing they just enabled were um, wrapped subnet tokens. So all not all 128, but almost all 128 uh, BitTensor subnets uh, now have corresponding wrap tokens on Solana. So this means you can use your soul and your phantom wallet on the Solana chain and go and purchase shoots, you know, or, you know, Targon or, you know, any of the 128, most of the 128, the major 128 uh, subnets that are on BitTensor. Now, I've also expressed some concern about the fact that, you know, in the past, uh, there have been a lot of, of uh, bridge hacks. Right. So the major way in which hackers steal crypto is they find a bridge uh, right uh, somewhere where the tokens on one side of the bridge on one chain, there's a massive amount of, of tokens locked up, sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars worth of tokens that are sort of locked and frozen in carbonite over here. And then wrap tokens appear on this other bridge here. But this is a massive honeypot over on the other side where the original tokens live. If a bad person can get into that stash of tokens, that's a great way to, to grab $100 million worth of X, Y, and Z um, assets over on this other chain. So there have been a number of, of chain hacks. So that's the big danger with this sort of bridge and wrap token setup. Um, however, Chainlink has come along with Chainlink's cross-chain interoperability protocol, um, which is a, a way to make bridges a lot more reliable and, and hopefully hack-proof. And so far... Uh, CCCIP has proven to be pretty good. And it's definitely an improvement over kind of the bridge and wrap token setups we've seen in the past. So uh, I am hopeful that, and Void uses this, by the way, for uh, their Tau Solana bridge mechanism. So uh, I am hopeful that this is enough to keep this, this, uh, this setup safe. Okay, so because there are now wrapped uh, BitTensor tokens over in the Solanaverse, uh, that means that any DeFi protocol in Solana can add uh, can add these tokens, can add these BitTensor subnet tokens and and wrap Tau uh, to existing DeFi applications with only one line of code. So that means that lending protocols, you know, who knows what people are going to do with this, but you could have you could basically have um, you know all, you could be able to borrow wrap shoots right or use wrap shoots as collateral uh, against something else you know, against a stable coin, right? You could have collateralized, shoots collateralized stable coins 
now existing on Solana. So there are all kinds of things that are now possible. All the kind of crazy innovation we've seen in DeFi, uh, BitTensor wrap Tau and BitTensor wrap subnet tokens can now be used in all these DeFi things that we all know and love. Now, uh, at the moment, uh, these alpha tokens are at this moment tradable on um, on Radium. So the major Solana exchanges like Radium, Uniswap, and Aerodrome. Uh, so the alpha tokens, most of them are available right now. Um, the, liquidi- the liquidity, however, is pretty low because they just launched this like two days ago, right? So the Void people um, solved the problem of making this possible, which was a massive step. You have to give them a lot of credit. A lot of people are complaining because there's not a lot of liquidity right now. But, oh, my God, you know, first of all, we had to make it possible for there to be liquidity and for the, this bridge and wrap token setup to exist, which Void has successfully done. So thank you, Void people. You were the first to provide this kind of capability to the world. So thank you. Um, now the rest of the world has to come along and supply liquidity. And the liquidity is in the process of booting up. Uh, but in the future, Void AI subnet 106 is going to reward miners for providing liquidity, providing genuine liquidity, right? So um, what that means is, is that if you are providing liquidity to the to wrap tokens on the Solana side, so, you know, wrap tau, wrapped shoots or whatever, pick, pick your subnet token of choice, um, they will reward you uh, consistently with uh, subnet 106 token emissions, right? So pretty great. That's how you mine 106 is with, which is the voids uh, subnet is by providing liquidity or liquidity mining, right? Um, Okay. So now the liquidity that 106 void AI attracts uh, is rebalanced across all chains and they bootstrap, bootstrap the depth whenever new pools launch. So right now void AI is only available on one chain. So it's on, uh, it's only on Solana, uh, but in the future, it's going to be on Ethereum. It's going to be on Base. It's going to be on a number of chains, and basically, it's going to because there's bridges between all these chains for the wrapped subnet tokens and wrapped Tau. Uh, they're going to automatically rebalance across all chains and uh, and and basically keep the liquidity uh, viable across in this in this cross chain universe, uh, using all the liquidity at their disposal to continuously rebalance everything across all chains. So pretty cool. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the dual pool treasury flywheel, bit of a tongue twister. Um, So what this means is is that um, 50% of all the profits that Void makes from trading fees or bridge fees um, is going to be used, you know, basically they're going to go buy Raptau and USDC. They're going to take their own profits, 50% of them, and automatically buy Raptau and USDC in equal amounts and add them to the pools on every supported chain. So this will allow for lower slippage and bigger trades eventually as the liquidity pools grow and grow and grow and grow and grow, and grow. hopefully as more people use this stuff, right? Use the bridges and use the wrap tokens. The other 50% of their profits will auto buy subnet 106 tokens. Um, so they're going to be you know, buying back their own tokens. Furthermore, they're going to be adding those bought tokens to the wrapped subnet 106 pools in all of these chains, you know, like Solana and Ethereum, et cetera. And they're going to grow their own market depth instead of burning tokens. So uh, you're going to be able to see all this. The treasury wallets are all on chain and fully transparent, and the buybacks are automated. So subnet 106 tokens uh, are staked um, with them in order to provide governance. So, you know, being able to vote on, you know, what chain should they provide next? You know, what subnet token should they provide next? Um, You know, how should the should we change the way the pools are managed? All that stuff is going to be that governance will be available to subnet 106 alpha token holders. So long as you stake them. So that's it. And I hope you've enjoyed this. Bit Tensor Brief. Uh, as I said in the last Bit Tensor Brief, I am participating in the Bit Tech, uh, sorry, the BitCast network as a miner by providing these videos. They provide briefs to us video producers and we produce videos according to the specs, although I'm allowed to add in my own editorial, right? I'm not just reading a script, uh, but there are just, you know, certain informational points they ask us to highlight. So uh, I do hit those. Uh, and I'm now successfully mining Tau 
simply by producing video. So it's pretty cool. So if you're the sort of person that produces video um, in the BitTensor ecosystem, BitCast is a really great way to earn some extra tau. So that's it. My name is Mark Jeffrey. This is a BitTensor Brief. We'll see you all next time.